everyone, Jeff Lee here from AbleCine, joined today by Jason Zapata, our Director of Integration, talking today about the CRN700 from Canon. We did a previous video on the CRN500, but we, today we really wanted to focus on some of the differentiators uh, and the key features of the 700, including a couple of really neat features that they rolled out that's actually compatible with the 300, 500, and of course the 700. Uh, so I think starting off right away, one of the things that we saw right away when we looked at the spec sheet was the fact that it's adding uh, a new mode to the autofocus. So instead of just face detect, it's adding a new eye detect. Right, and uh, yeah, that's one of the features we really enjoy. Um, the eye detect adds a whole nother level of tracking someone's face or keeping a subject within the frame. Uh, and for a lot of our integration jobs, that's really important, uh, especially for enterprise deployments or house of worship installations, where you might not always have um, you know, a camera operator available or for house of worship, it's a lot of volunteers mm -hmm. that are involved. So you could set up the uh, autofocus uh, and eye detection and the camera does a lot of the work while um, you know the camera operators can focus on you know other tasks. Yeah, yeah, and and kind of to your point, they added a new feature, which is uh, a sort of a turn away. So even if your your person on camera, your subject turns around, it's still able to track the back of their head, and eventually when they come back to look at the camera, of course, it'll refine them again based on their eye or face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense for, for those applications, certainly. Uh, we also like the fact that it introduces uh, you know 4K 60 output versus the, the 30. From right, the yeah, 4K 60s are uh, really great for live performances uh, and sports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having that higher frame rate is, is um, you know, really beneficial, um, you know, for fast moving objects uh, or, um, you know, like if you're doing like a concert, um, performers are, you know, kind of running around a stage. Uh, it's really great for, you know, live performances, dance, things like that. Yeah. And of course, with that comes the 12G output too, which right. uh, is how we're able to get a single output on uh, 4K60. Uh, but still has a 3G output, which is nice. And one of the kind of really interesting things is the fact that the 700 can actually do a dual output. Uh, right. I love having versatility. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can have multiple outputs, like 12G uh, SDI output is great. Uh, it also still has native uh, IP output. Um, a lot of our deployments, you know, utilize NDI technology, which is built into this camera. It has built-in NDI HX. Um, so I like redundancy. So if I can have multiple, sure. you know, outputs going out at the same time, especially for live performances, uh, having you know that redundancy available out of the gate is, you know, is really big. Yeah, of course, and of course, everyone always wants a different signal, right? right? So you're always fighting with someone who wants, let's say, a clean, someone who wants a dirty with all the on-screen characters, someone that needs 4K, someone that just wants 1080. Right. Uh, and the ability to do that with the multiple outputs, and then of course with their new uh, region of interest, uh, or point of interest selection where you can actually do a crop through the software and have a dual output. You know, so maybe like this, right? We have a single camera doing a two-shot, but we want to do a nice insert on Jason or on the camera, let's say. <laughs> right. right. You have that actually able to do that within camera without having to have multiple cameras or having the camera, uh, you know, panning physically. Right. It's really great on, uh, you know, if you have to do a, like a multi-cam production on a budget with one camera, you can set up multiple shots and angles, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. And this, of course, keeps all the same other features, like you mentioned, NDIHX built in, uh, not an extra fee, it's included. Right, that's all that's included, you know, with the price of the camera, it's not an additional license fee. Right, HDMI output, right, kind of all that good stuff mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, neat. And then, of course, kind of maybe the big flagship feature that they introduced with this camera, but then uh, introduced to the 300 and the 500 as well afterwards, is the auto tracking. Right capability. Uh, so not autofocus, it's actually auto tracking where the camera itself will pan and tilt with your subjects. So what's really good about that is I think to your point, when you have multiple cameras, single single operator, is to trust the camera to do a really nice job keeping track of a subject and you're basically supervising at that point. Uh, or just, uh, you know, if you have, do you, right, you have a congregation at a house of worship who are not professional camera operators, mm -hmm. they're volunteers, they're, they can trust that the main speaker is going to always be within that frame, framework. And that is an optional license. Right. Yeah, that is an optional uh, license from Canon. Uh, and that gets loaded directly into the camera, um, which is great. So you don't need like to have an extra PC in, in the chain to manage those licenses. It gets loaded directly onto the camera. Yeah, and then you know it, it does have some smarts too, so you can set boundaries as well. So if you do have a uh, you know someone who tends to walk around quite a bit when they're speaking, you don't want them to go off a of frame or off stage, and you don't want the camera to track. You can set those soft boundaries as well. Right, really great for lecture capture as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you, as you mentioned, if you have a whiteboard, someone's doing some sort of uh, teleschribing or even physically on a whiteboard, it'll know that that's sort of the main region. So if the subject is within that region, to not move the camera around, right? Because for example, if I'm writing on something and I, and I tend to be one of those talkers that sways a bit, 
it, it'll maintain that perspective of the whiteboard. But then if I walk off of the whiteboard, that's when it'll start to move over. Right. So a lot of smart, intelligent features built into that uh, as well. And again, like we mentioned, backwards compatible with the 300 and 500. Um, so of course, we're, we have here, uh, thrilled with the RC IP100 controller, uh, but we were fortunate enough to get a bit of a sneak peek at the next generation controller, uh, which they'll be announcing very shortly. Uh, which will be able to directly control the auto tracking. Because right now you do need a IP-based tool, whether it's an iPad or a computer, to be able to select your targets and move your framing tools around. But yeah, I, I think when we left that meeting with Ken, you know, that was one of the key things that we noticed. Right, yeah, it was very exciting because on, on that controller, um, the built-in uh, touchscreen will allow you to see video, f uh, video feed from the camera and just by tapping and touching, you'll be able to change your focus and um, the subject that the camera's tracking. So for a single operator managing multiple cameras, it makes the workflow much faster and easier to use. Yeah, of course, backwards compatible since it uses the Canon protocol as well. So that's always kind of a nice upgrade if one was looking into doing that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, for anyone that's actually been to an event in Able City, Brooklyn, we actually have three of the CRN 500s in our theater. Uh, and I personally can't wait until we have the auto track license installed on our three cameras. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, most of our events are run by a single operator in the control room, so that'll make their lives a lot easier uh, being able to manage multiple cameras. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I know we're both really excited about all the new features and capabilities, especially within the software. And I think it's really neat that it's not something that requires additional hardware, like you mentioned. It's just a software license. So for those that need it, it's there. And for those that don't, right, they don't need to sort of pay that premium for it. Uh, but having that sort of tool chest available to them is really powerful for the type of folks that you speak to on a daily in terms of you know the, the folks that want this installed. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's going to enable our clients to take their projects to the next level. Great. Well, Jason, really appreciate you taking some time to talk today uh, with us about the CRN 700 from Canon. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.